Buckle up, because we're about to do a deep dive on the copyright status of game mechanics and why the SRD actually is copyrightable and, in fact, is indeed copyrighted by Wizards of the Coast, and why the OGL is needed in order to legally access that information. Let's get to it. I've noticed that there have been a lot of comments on my YouTube channel recently telling me that I don't need to worry about this Dungeons & Dragons OGL situation because game mechanics aren't copyrightable anyway, and the OGL just gives you access to the SRD, which isn't copyrightable because it's just the game mechanics, no license is necessary, so we should all just carry on and it's no big deal. This is all based on a confusion between the game mechanics themselves and the expression of the game mechanics. Because it is absolutely true that game mechanics cannot be copyrighted, according to the standard interpretation of U.S. law, it is absolutely the case that the expression of game mechanics can be copyrighted, which means that the SRD can be copyrighted, and more importantly, is in fact copyrighted, and Wizards of the Coast holds the copyright to that document. It is in fact the OGL which gives you access to that document because the Dungeons & Dragons SRD is exclusively available through the OGL license. So let's take a look at what some of the things people are saying in the comments section to understand what their position is, and then I'm going to argue to the contrary. So Eric George says, Honestly, with current copyright laws, you cannot hold a copyright to a set of formulae or processes or mechanics, and you can legally just claim on the box, book, box, whatever, that you are compatible with X as such. Yes, that's true. We've been over that multiple times on this channel. But then he goes and says something that is completely false. He says, as such, there was no need for an OGL to begin with. That's completely false. Because the OGL gives you an open license to the expression of the mechanics of Dungeons and & Dragons. And we're going to talk about why exactly that is so important here in just one second. But he continues, I have to admit that I was super stoked about the OGL when it first came out. But after poring over copyright law for years, it has become very apparent that if you publish under the OGL, you're actually agreeing to be more restricted than if you say you were just compatible with whatever set of mechanics. We've already talked about multiple times on this channel about how you are agreeing when you publish, publish under the OGL to not use Dungeons & Dragons trademarks, which you might be able to do otherwise. But what are you giving up if you choose to not publish under the OGL? You're giving up the ability to use the expression of the Dungeons & Dragons game mechanics that is, given, that is articulated in the OGL. He goes on to argue whether or not GURPS should be under such a license, which isn't the point here. In a similar vein, Treblane writes, But what about the issue that copyright law cannot even control copying the SRD, as it isn't a work of expression, like a novel or a film? That is completely false. Copyright law does absolutely cover the SRD. The SRD is copyright by Wizards of the Coast. I will demonstrate that to you in just a moment. But he continues on, it's a process or methodology, like writing a book on accounting to prevent anyone from doing accounting that way. No, it is not. The SRD is a particular expression of the rules of Dungeons and Dragons. It is absolutely copyrightable. He says, which international copyright law has found is not protected by copyright. Again, the mechanics are not copyrightable. But the expressions of those mechanics are, and the SRD is absolutely an expression. He says this isn't really about any sort of legal licensing. If you make a competing game system, guess what? It's not protected by copyright law. What is protected is the story, the creatures you created, your original character, Donut Steel, that is protected. What is not protected is the feats and what class abilities you have at each level. The expression of those things absolutely is. Absolutely. Absolutely it is. It is not protected that you roll HP per level or not, or when you can roll with advantage or disadvantage. That is not protected. That is true. But when you write down in a paragraph, or two paragraphs, or three paragraphs, or 20 or 30 pages, describing exactly the methodology that you need to go through in order to roll with advantage or disadvantage or when, those words that you used are an expression of those mechanics, and they are absolutely copyrightable, and they have been copyrighted. And in the case of the SRD, they absolutely are. And more than that, Everyone who uses the OGL affirms the copyright that Wizards of the Coast has of the expression of those mechanics contained in the SRD. Let's take a look at that now. I'm going to go over here to the Open Gaming License. This is the Open Gaming License 1.0a, and you can find this on opengamingfoundation.org or in many other places. As you probably know, it's a very short document and it only contains 15 different sections. The 15th section is, in fact, a copyright notice. So let's take a look at the copyright notice. The copyright notice says the Open Game License version 1.0a is copyright 2000 Wizards of the Coast, Inc. And we've talked about that on this channel before as to why exactly this particular document, this document right here, the OGL, is copyrighted by Wizards of the Coast. 
on the stream with Ryan Dancy, we talked about that. But there are more copyright assertions as well. Notice this right here. It says, System Reference Document, Copyright 2000 to 2003, Wizards of the Coast, Inc., Authors Jonathan Tweet, Monty Cook, Skip Williams, Rich Baker, Andy Collins, David Noonan, Rich Redman, Bruce R. Cordell, John D. Ratliff, uh, Thomas Reed, James Wyatt, based on original material by E. Gary Gygax and David Arneson. So it's specifically telling you right there in the OGL that the SRD is a copyrighted work and it's held by uh, Wizards of the Coast. This right here is the Pathfinder 2nd Edition core book. It is published under the terms of the OGL 1.0a. As we can see, as we can see, 1.0a is in the back of the book. And what does this book tell me about the copyright status of the SRD? It tells me exactly. The system reference document is copyright 2000 Wizard of the Coast Inc. Authors Jonathan Tweet, Monty Cook, and Skip Williams, based on material by E. Gary Gygax and David Arneson. So both Wizard of the Coast, when they publish this license, and in this case Paizo and many other companies who publish under this, write in their book and a Firm that the SRD is copyright by Wizards of the Coast. Let's go over here and look at the SRD itself. I am now looking at a PDF of the SRD version 5.01, which is the latest version of the SRD. What does it say? It tells us legal information. Permission to copy, modify, and distribute the files, collectively known as the System Reference Document 5.01 SRD5, is granted solely through the use of the Open Gaming Rights License, version 0.1a. Now that's interesting, isn't it? Because if this document did not have a copyright on it, then why would any license be necessary to access it or use it at all? It wouldn't be. It's telling me, it's telling me that permission to copy, modify, and distribute all of this is granted solely through the open gaming license. And we have seen other game systems which will license under multiple systems or multiple different licenses. Wizards of the Coast is telling you very explicitly this is copyrighted material and if you would like to use it you have to abide by the terms of open gaming license version 1.0a. It says this material is being released using the open gaming license version 1.0a and you should read and understand the terms of that license before using this material. It says the text of the open gaming license itself is not open game content because we know that it is copyright of uh, Wizards of the Coast and it is not released under any type of open license. Instructions on using the license are provided within the license itself. They go on to define all the product identity that you are not allowed to use, that that's their material, but then they say that the rest of the SRD5 is, an op is open game content as described in section 1.D of the license. The terms of the Open Gaming License version 1.A are as follows, and then we have a copy of Open Game License 1.0A in here, as is required to distribute with any material that is released under the open gaming license. And what do we have right here? We have the copyright notice right here. It is telling me that system reference document 1.5, which is what I am looking at right now, is copyright 2016, Wizards of the Coast, authors Mike Merles, Jeremy Crawford, Chris Perkins, Rodney Thompson, Peter Lee, James Wyatt, Robert J. Schwab, Bruce, Bruce R. Cordell, Chris Sims, Steve Townsend, based on the original material by E. Gary Gygax and Dave Arneson. So they are asserting copyright right here. And this is another one of those things. This has been going on for the past 22 plus years. And when this first started, we said, what is the likelihood that there was some problem with the OGL that no lawyers or anybody who was involved in this ever noticed over all of that time. Is it really the case that all of this time copyright notices have been on the SRD and over the past 22 years for all the companies and lawyers who have looked at that, no one noticed that the SRD could not be copyrighted? No, that doesn't seem plausible. That seems implausible, right? That that would be the case. And from all of the work that we have been doing and researching on this channel, it's absolutely the case that this material would be copyrighted right here. Because you can imagine a situation where perhaps you and I sit down at a table and we got some dice and we got some pieces of note paper and some index cards to take notes on and some markers and we come up with a game rule system and we say, hey, we're gonna, maybe we should call this Dungeons and Dragons. We're gonna roll this type of dice. We're gonna add this kind of number to it and we're gonna compare it to this kind of number. And then if you roll this number on this other kind of die, then we're gonna say you killed a monster. And we're gonna call that Dungeons and Dragons. Can you copyright what we just came up with? No, we can't, because that's game mechanics. But if I go home after that meeting, and I sit down at my computer, and I type up a very long document, this is how many pages? This is a 403 page long document, a description of all of the mechanics that we just came up at the table. Can I copyright it? Yes, I can, absolutely. This is an expression of the mechanics that we came up with at that table. 
So that means that if you go home after our game design meeting, you can also sit down and write up a completely different description of these mechanics. We understand what we meant by rolling this die, adding this number, comparing it to this number, rolling that die, and determining whether you killed the monster. I had a particular way that I expressed that in my written document that's copyrightable. You can write a complete, a completely different set of words, completely different paragraph, completely different two paragraphs, whatever it takes you to describe the exact same mechanics, the mechanics that are not copyrightable. But your expression, which could be different from my expression, is also copyrightable. So we have two different copyrightable expressions of the exact same game mechanics that is not copyrightable. We should probably say something about the accounting that Treble Lane mentioned in his example, because he may be referring to the same situation that Bob Tarantino was referring to when he wrote his dissertation in order to get his PhD in IP law. And of course, this dissertation is one that we've been over on this channel already extensively. Bob refers to this example of an accounting method, a bookkeeping system. Tarantino writes, As Samuelson notes, the U.S. Supreme Court decision of Baker v. Selden involving a plaintiff who unsuccessfully sued for infringement of the copyright in his book describing a bookkeeping system is often cited as authority for the notion that U.S. copyright law does not extend to systems or methods of practicing an activity. He goes on to say that notion was ultimately codified in U.S. copyright law 17 U.S. code, I believe that's section 102b, which provides that in no case does copyright protection for an original work of authorship extend to any idea, procedure, process, system, method of operation, concept, principle, or discovery. So what exactly does that mean? That means that this guy had this particular method of accounting, and then somebody else went and wrote a book that described the method of accounting. The other person wrote an expression of those procedures and mechanics used for this bookkeeping system. And then the guy who had thought up the accounting system, but did not have an expression of them, they were just in his head or whatever, I'm assuming, sued because he thought that somebody else writing a book codifying his procedures and processes into an expression was a breach of his copyright. And the court held no, it was not, because those processes alone that are in his head and that he's using in his bookkeeping system was not copyrightable. The other person was absolutely free to write a whole book describing that bookkeeping system in detail and publishing it, and it did not violate any type of copyright that the person who thought up that system would have. This is very much analogous to the system of thinking up D&D. As another example, if you and I sat down at a table with some notebooks and some notepads and sticky notes and we said, let's think of a new method of accounting, and you and I sat down and thought up a whole new method of accounting, would those techniques that we just thought up, techniques and methods, be copyrightable? No, they would not. But then if I went home and I wrote a 200-page book explaining how to use that method and describing that method, would that be copyrightable? Yes, it would. And likewise, you could go home and write up a completely different book, maybe 250 pages this time, that describes the processes and mechanics of our accounting system. Would either one of us be in breach of the other person's copyright? No, we would not. We would have two different expressions, both of which are copyrightable, of the same system and mechanics. What I would not be allowed to do, if you went home and wrote up your 250-page book, was to sneak into your house copy all of your 250 pages, your exact word-for-word -word expression of our accounting system that we developed, and then try to publish it as my own, because then I would be violating the copyright of your expression of the accounting system. Tarantino goes on to write that while a game may not be protected by copyright, the various means by which the game may be expressed may be very well protected. Boyden writes that the constituent elements of a game, such as the rule sheet, the game board, and pieces, are capable of being protected by copyright. Put differently, while game mechanics are not protected by copyright, the particular form in which the rules are expressed may be protectable, assuming the satisfaction of other prerequisites for protection, such as originality, and subject to other limiting rules, such as the merger doctrine, doctrine as are the other elements of the game, such as illustrations and graphic elements on game boards. To me, this means that while the mechanics of Dungeons & Dragons cannot be copyrighted, the particular expressions of those mechanics absolutely certainly are, and the SRD happens to be a very important expression of the D&D rules, in fact, the canonical expression of the D&D rules, which are copyrighted by Wizards of the Coast and made available for use as open game content under the open game license. In the next video, we'll talk about why all of this is important. So that's how I see it, but I'm not a lawyer. I'm just a guy who has been looking into this for about the past week and a half trying to sort all of this out. Let me know what you think down in the comments. What else do we need to look at? I'll be happy to check it out. Later!